Praise y'all. Everybody, please go ahead and be seated. And we're going to be continuing on in the uh, this same chapter here where we started off last week, chapter 20, the finishing work, the finishing work of the seventh messenger number five. That is it. Six months left, clean up or burn. And again, this comes from the 10, 18, 2003 Feast of Tabernacles, and we're covering pages 159 to 170. And the main subject, again, just to kind of rehearse here, the main subject of this sermon is that in the last days of the seventh Moloch will be the finishing of Yahweh's 6,000 year plan and the resurrection. And we covered just a little bit about what it's going to be like and what we're going to experience with that resurrection last week. I mean, it's truly, it truly is an amazing thing. And just to kind of, just a real brief recap, uh, you know, Yahshua's memorial Passover and the Feast of Eleven Bread, it's, it's, it's rapidly approaching. I mean, it's, we're what, two weeks away? A little over two weeks away now, I think. Um, might be a little bit, so you got this. Yeah, I think right about, yeah, right around there. Um, but it, it's 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 coming and it's coming quickly, um, and we of course we need to make those preparations. And you know, as Yahshua said uh, in Luke twenty two seven to thirteen, you know, he told his disciples, you know, to make ready, to make ready the Passover. And of course, that means a lot more than just getting the the leavening out of our cars, getting the leavening out of our houses. You know, that represents something else. Remember what that represents. That represents getting the sin out of our lives because that leavening represents sin. And you can see here from that footnote there, that word um, to, to uh, that word make ready means to prepare. It means to make ready, referring to that internal fitness. So as we are going through and we're searching for that leavening and we're getting that out, remember what we're doing inside. Remember how we're getting rid, uh, rid of, of the leavening that uh, that leavening of sin okay and it's, we're purging ourselves of that for, uh, and we're purging ourselves from that uncleanness the things that will separate us from Yahweh and um, you know we're getting those things out of us so that we can make that connection and remember that's what the Feast of Unleavened Bread represents it represents living our lives without sin that's why we one of the reasons that we don't consume uh, leavening for that seven days and that's what it represents okay so in doing that, you know, in, in, in doing this, we have to have a certain mindset. And, you know, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 actually says it best. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahshua Messiah. You know, Yahshua had it in his mind. He had in his mindset to be perfectly righteous and not ever to commit sin. And, of course, he was, very, he was successful in doing that. That's why he qualified to be our high priest. You know, we need to emulate that. We need to strive to, we need to strive to have that same mindset, that same determination that he did, okay? And one of the things that will help us accomplish that is written in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 15, where it mentions about honey, eating honey and butter. And it says, honey and butter will help us to accept righteousness, and Pastor told us this, and it, again, Isaiah seven fifteen shows that. But honey and butter will help us to accept righteousness and learn to hate evil, okay? And there's something, there's something when these two things are combined. Remember, there's something when these two things are combined, you know, the, you know, the clean honey and the clean butter made in the way that Yahweh intended them to be made. There's something with the microorganisms when these things come together, they combine and they do a job and they do something miraculous. They do something totally amazing within our bodies, within our minds. It helps us to actually do just that, to accept righteousness and to learn to hate evil. And that's why we need to have it. We need to have it every day so we can have that constantly within us, okay? And Pastor, he mentioned over, I think it was on page 160, he said, we have to remember what we're training for. This work that we're in now, in the days of the voice of the seventh Moloch, this work is the finishing work that will gain, it is gonna, it's going to bring the, the plan of Yahweh to completion. This portion of the plan, it's going to bring it to completion. And this it is this work, it's going to, it's, it's qualifying 
for us, you know, when we qualify for this, is, is when we will actually gain the power, the authority and the power to actually rule the universe. But we have to prove ourselves, and this is what we're doing. We're proving ourselves either fit to do this or unfit to do this. And part of that is to be raising the dead, just like we read back in Yekeskia last week. Okay, you know, go back and read that and just see, you know, the, you know, the detail of, 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 of what we're going to see here very soon. I mean, we have the opportunity to be a part of it, but the choice is up to us if we want it or not. You know, Yahweh, obviously, he wants us to be a part of that because we're here and we have the opportunity to qualify for it. You know, we just have to, we just have to put forth the effort. We have to put forth the effort in and go after it. Yahweh created us, he shows, to be managers. You know, he, call, he, he, he called us and he wants us to qualify. He created us to be managers. And a manager, manager is simply that person who is responsible for controlling or administering all are part of a company or organization. You know, we've been called for the administration of this house. You know, this is one of the offices that we've been called in, and, and we're going, we are qualifying for that. And to, to be managers over everything that he created, that's not being offered to anybody else on the face of this earth. It's truly a, it's truly a humbling thing when you think about what is actually set before us. And it's within our reach. It's truly within our grasp. It's, 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 we're so close to it. And where do we learn this from? Where do we learn? We learn these things. How do we learn how to manage these things? How do we learn to do these? Where do we learn, get the instructions on how to do this? Well, there's only one place on the face of the earth that we can, and we learn this from the house of Yahweh, and it's only at the house of Yahweh. The pillar and ground of the truth, as 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 shows. You know, the, the, the 4,199 religions out there, they teach against all or some of Yahweh's laws. And they're not going to, they have no part in this whatsoever. You know, we're told, you know, and uh, it was in verse 28 over here on page 161. Pastor says, I know, he's, uh, he's quoting the scripture here. He says, and I know your works, and you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And this goes right along, he says, with the seven lamp lampstand that we see in Zechariah chapter 4. And, you, and it's a lot more than just knowing the name of Yahweh. People know the name of Yahweh. There's multi, a multitude of organizations that know the name of Yahweh. But it's more than just knowing the name. What, what? You know, I know your works and you have to not, not denied my name. What does a name represent? Represents what? Okay. Character. Yes, it represents. Remember, the name represents. It represents the very character of the individual that possesses it. Remember when Yahweh re revealed his, his name to Moshe? You know, and he allowed all of his righteousness to pass in front of Moshe. And, and it was revealed the the. the Yahweh's perfect attributes, his, 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 his perfect 13 attributes were revealed to Moshe. His perfect character was revealed. And that it all ties in to that name. It's that very character of the individual that possesses it. And, Yahweh's, it, and it's, it's Yahweh's perfect righteous attributes, his very character displayed in all of his 613 laws. And the only way that we cannot deny his name is to be obedient to those laws and to keep those same laws. And in doing that, we are being made in the image and likeness of Yahweh. See, we can deny Yahweh's name by rebelling against any one of his laws, and then we deny, we can deny Yahweh in that way. So, and again, you know, these, the 4,199 religions, they, they don't follow these laws. And we've got to remember the warning that's given in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that shows that Satan works with all deceivableness of sin, all powers and signs and lying wonders. And remember what Isaiah, we kind of left off there with Isaiah 8.20, where it shows if they speak not according to the law and the prophecies because there is no light in them, and pastor shows that, it shows that they are not of Yahweh. Okay. So we left off on page 161, and we can pick up here in verse 33, over here on the right-hand page, about the middle right-hand side, right-hand column, middle of the page here. 
it says here in Zechariah, the prophets were inspired to say the same thing, that we are taking the pillar and ground of the truth, Yahweh's laws, and setting up a kingdom again for all the world to see in these last days. And now the, the pillar and ground of the truth, we can rem remember what, this, what the, the truth is, right? Okay. Now, what's the scripture? Where is that found? Okay, I'm, I'm hearing it. Psalm 119, 142, and 151. Okay. All right, so these laws, you know, Yahweh is setting up this, this kingdom again for all the world to see in these last days. And then he shows here in verse three, verse 3, he says, And there are two olive trees by it, and this last day's work is seen in these two olive trees. Verse 4, what are these? Verse 11, then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the lampstand and upon the left side of it? And then I spoke to him again, uh, I spoke, uh, spoke to him again and to him, what are these olive branches through which the golden pipes emptied the golden oil through them? As Revelation said to the congregations, you are the last congregation of Yahweh. You are the western light that shines in the midst of the darkness here in this world. You know, and, and um, Matithia 5.14. Matithia 5.14 is, is a cross-reference there that shows that. It says, you are the light of a world, a city. Now, this should mean a lot more now. You think about the work that's set up and what Yahshua was saying here. You are the light of the world. A city which is set on a, set, set on a hill cannot be hidden. What is the name of the city that is set on this hill? The city of Yisrael. On the highest point in this county. This city is set on a hill and it cannot be hidden. And it's, 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 it's elevated, it's being shown in the, the, the beings of the universe. All of these beings, they're all looking down and they're all seeing exactly what is taking place here with each and every one of us. Okay? Now back to the book over here on page, I see, we're still on page 161. It says here, down here in verse 14, these are the two anointed ones, the, the two ordained ones who stand, you know, who stand for the supreme ruler of the whole earth. So when you think about that word stand, it means a lot more than just being, just standing upright. But look at what this word stand means. This word stand means to take a position or a place as indicated. Well, where is this position or place indicated for these two witnesses? Where is that position? Where is it, where is it told? In the prophecies, right? They're prophesied. They have a prophesied work. So they are to take a position or a place as indicated through the prophecies. To remain firm or steadfast as in a cause. Yes, they, are, they remain firm. They remain steadfast in the teaching and the preaching and the publishing of the laws of Yahweh of this warning that goes forth. In fact, that's the, that's the commission of this house in these last days, and Pastor has carried that out. The spokesman of the two witnesses has carried that out to a T and continues to carry it out. And then we see here to have or adopt a certain policy, course, or attitude as of adherence or support. And notice what that adherence or support is. Look what it's for. That adherence or support for the laws of Yahweh. And it also means an opposition to or resistance to what? To sin. Okay, so that's what, that's, that's what this word stand means. The, these are the two anointed ones, the ordained ones, who stand for the supreme ruler of the whole earth. So what we are doing is bringing back exactly what we see that was set up by Moshe, which, which Yahweh says is a pattern of his kingdom in heaven. He says, the things you see there are merely a pattern. I am showing, uh, I, uh, merely the pattern that I'm showing you. And he says here to make all people and all things and all hearts and all minds according to this pattern. To make all things according to the pattern that we've seen. Okay, so if you want to put some cross references with that, you can have, you can put down Exodus 25, 40 and Hebrews 8, 5 if you want to cross reference that with anything. On the bottom of the page here, it says, Zechariah 5.1, And then again, I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying scroll. 
Verse 3, this is a curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. And then pastor shows her, he says, you know we have not done anything. We have not done anything to bring this curse. Okay? Yahweh doesn't bring a curse upon mankind. Yahweh doesn't bring a curse upon people for disobedience. Pastor shows, he says, we are the ones who are trying to stop this curse right now as through the teaching and the preaching that's going forth from this house. In fact, I've fought against, I've fought against it just about all of my life. Verse 4, I will send this curse out, says Yahweh of hosts, and it will enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him who vows an oath with my name for the sake of falsehood. Okay, so this curse comes upon the people who are committing what? Who are doing what? Right. They're sinning. Just like, just like it shows in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It says, all of these blessings will come upon you uh, if you do these things. However if, however, if you are disobedient and do not do the things that are written, then these curses will come upon you. Okay? So, the judgments, we have to remember, man, the judgments are set. Okay? Yahweh's not out there looking to see who he can zap. That's a teaching of the Catholic Church. You know, he's not looking to see who he can punish. But being the loving, merciful father that he is, he teaches his children through the one that is sent in these last days. He's teaching his children how to avoid these curses. And it's up to us whether we follow it or not. The earth at this time, the world at this time, is, is most assuredly they're not following, they're, they're, they're not following that. You know, they're continuing what they have continued to do. As we're going to see here in just a little bit, they're continuing to follow after, follow after the queen of heaven. But go back, if we go back to the book here, he says, these are the ones who, can, who come, who are baptized and say, yes, all that you say, all that you have said, we will do. And then they start turning like rebellious children against his father and mother. Pastor shows here, he says, we have to strike them a few times with a two-edged sword and hope and pray they will straighten them out. Now, don't take that seriously. Don't take that literally. There's, not, there, there's, there's no two-edged sword that's being packed around and nobody's getting physically hit with anything. But what is, but what is this two-edged sword? What is it? Praise Yahweh. Let's take a look over here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of Yahweh, that is the law and the prophets, is living and it's powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the body and the spirit and the joints of the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So that's what, that's what this two-edged sword is. Revelation 11.5 actually kind of shows the same thing. You know, Revelation 11.5 shows the same thing here. And this is talking about the two witnesses. It says, If any among them determines in his mind to commit sin... The every word of Yahweh, that is the law and the prophets. Notice it says, like, a, like the two-edged sword of fire proceeds out of the mouth of the spokesman of them, and he devours their enemies. And at any, if anyone among them should continue to commit sin, it is, it, in this manner it is binding for him to be destroyed. So it is this teaching, it's this rebuke. It's the correction that is going forth. That's what's going forth from the mouth of the spokesman of the witness. It's the correction that's going out to all the nations, just like it shows in Isaiah chapter 2 and Micaiah chapter 4, where, the, where strong nations are being rebuked from afar off. They're being corrected. And it's up to the people on whether or not they're going to accept that correction or not. Okay, and continuing on here, back in the book here, it says, and by that time, he says, by that time they've had their feet in their mouths so deep it's hard to get it out. They would, have, they would be better off if they, would, if they would humbly go and ask the priest, why are we doing this, or do we have an example of this set up to follow? Then it would be shown to them. Okay, verse 5. It says, then the Moloch who was speaking, uh, speaking with me came forward and said to me, lift up your eyes and now understand that which is sent by commandment. By commandment like in Revelation 12, 6, where he shows a woman in Oklahoma. And, and, you know, there's much been spoken of on this prophecy here concerning about this woman in Oklahoma. 
and there was this woman who was hidden so that a man could could uh, be born and could go forth and to bring forth a work okay and then pastor goes on he, he goes on and he talks about the word buffalo and if you remember it was uh there was a uh if you take a look at the buffaloes that are that are on display out here there's a uh, there's uh there's a plaque on there a description about hidden in a name and it goes into a lot of detail concerning that and uh concerning this and also there was a uh, uh something in a an article in the prophetic word that talked about the prophecy of the white buffalo okay and it talked about the name buffalo bill hawkins and why it was brought about you know, remember it was brought about or that was he was done that way he was named that way you know he was he was hidden for protection and he was and he was hidden in order to actually be able to restore the house of Yahweh at Abel and to restore the priesthood. That was the whole purpose for that. It was a, it was a means of protection. It was a means of protection. Let me see where we want to go here. Um, so if we go on down, if we go on down to verse forty-three here, which is on the left-hand side over here on page on uh, on one sixty-two. It says verse five, and now I understand that which is sent, and now and now un, now and now I understand that which is sent by commandment, and I asked, what is it? And he answered, he says, this is the ephah, the standard of perfection which is sent by Yahweh's law, and this is honor, knowledge, and understanding throughout the whole earth. And Pastor explains, he said, and this is exactly what we are bringing to the earth at this time. We have started chipping away at this big, tall mountain. Soon the house of Yahweh will be the only thing standing uh, on the earth in this time period. In verse 9, he says, And then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, two women. And, and Pastor shows, he says, These are the two women who bring forth two houses of Yahweh. Okay, The two witnesses, they bring forth two houses of Yahweh. These are what Yahweh raised up in these last days, the last two heirs of the house of Yahweh. And he shows, he says, we are the only era left, the Western light that has never gone out, history said. And that was, you know, that was something that Western light was always, always kept burning. It was prophesied that that light would never go out. And that's the promise that this era has, that this work has. This, Yahweh says that this work will not be allowed to be put into the grave, but it's going to accomplish what Yahweh has set forth, and it is going to usher in the great kingdom of Yahweh. Okay? At the end of this great tribulation, it is going to accomplish just that. And Pastor shows here, he says, they did not allow that light to ever go out. That was representing the prophecy of Yahweh. This is sent by commandment. The house of Yahweh is sent by commandment. Okay? If we've got to remember what, what Amoshia 3 7 says that you know that there will be no work other than that other than that which has been prophesied in advance by his servants, the prophets. Now the Spirit of Yahweh came to overshadow. And remember if you if you remember back in chapters eight and nine of this of, of this book, we we covered extensively the that word overshadow. And that you know that overshadowing means that, that that the laws of Yahweh, that this this way of life, that that bringing forth this plan became the most important thing in the apostles and the prophets, uh, you know, in you know it, in their lives. That was the most important thing to them, and it completely overtook them. It completely overtook their lives. And Pastor shows here. He says, "I brought out a sermon on that word because the Spirit of Yahweh overshadowed people." or it overtook their lives as it did with the holy apostles and the prophets and many of their wives okay so highlight this next part here highlight this next uh, this next little bit here it says it overshadowed them so they did exactly what what Yahweh prophesied that they would do okay highlight that it overshadowed them so they did exactly what Yahweh prophesied that they would do. And of course, what was that? That was to bring forth a holy child or to bring forth in these latter days 
the holiness that you're seeing in the house of Yahweh right now. And Pastor continues, he says, how can you possibly fight the spirit of Yahweh and the prophecies that said, this is the way, this is the way it is going to be done by my house in these last days. You know, how can you fight about that? You know, how can you fight against that? You can't. There is no way that you can. You, well, I take that back. You can fight against it. You won't win. You can fight against it. But it's a losing battle. This is the way. This is the way it is. This is the way it is going to be done by my house in these last days. The Spirit of Yahweh came to overshadow them, and they were covered they were covered with the covering of the saints. You know, and remember what a saint is. A saint is, is what's the definition of a saint? Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. One who keeps the whole law of Yahweh. So, you know, the, the spirit of Yahweh over, came to overshadow them, and they were covered with the covering of the saints. You know, when you think about this word, you know, when you think about the word, uh, you know, when you think about the tally, what the tally represents. The tally represents the 613 laws of Yahweh. I mean, it represents, it re, that's what it, re, it represents being covered by these laws. But they were covered with the covering of the saints. And they exalted, now it's verse 47 there, and they exalted, they had magnified, and they extolled the ether, the standard of perfection sent by Yahweh's laws separating pastor shows here separating the way of the world from the way of Yahweh as 1st Jochanan 310 says I highlight this next sentence here it says the laws are the difference between Yahweh's people and unholy people the laws are the difference between Yahweh's people and unholy people that's what sets us apart If you take a look at 2 Timaya 2.19, it tells us, it shows us, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh stands sure, having this seal. Yahweh knows those who are his, because everyone who reverences the name of Yahweh departs from iniquity. They stop sinning. That's how Yahweh knows they are his. That's how they have this seal. That's how we're sealed. We depart from iniquity. We stop sinning. That's how we're sealed by Yahweh. That's how Yahweh knows that we belong to him. Because we're obedient to him. Hey, that ties right in with Romans 6.16, doesn't it? Praise yes. Yahweh. It says in Zechariah 5.10, And then I said to the Moloch who was speaking with me, Where are they, the two witnesses, going with the ephah? And he said to me, well, they're, they're going to build the house of Yahweh according to the standard of perfection sent by Yahweh's laws in a Babylonian land which does, not, which does not yet exist. And pastor shows, he says, well, it existed in the plan of Yahweh. It existed in the plan of Yahweh from the beginning. He says, it existed in the plan of Yahweh because he calls me a Noki in his plan to rebuild and establish his house. He calls me an Oki, that is a poultry farmer, and, uh, and, and all the things that I have done, he said, he identifies me there. You know, do you want to argue with him? You know, do we want to argue with Yahweh? Do we want to argue with, with the prophecies? He says, I don't think you will for long, and I'm thinking you will need to humble yourself just a little bit. If you'll get those tapes from before the feast and listen to them about Eob or Yeshub, and if you... You know, we can go back and we can read them because they're in this very book in chapters 13, 14, and 15. Okay, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to cross-reference that, this book, the first book of Yisroel, chapters 13 and 14 and 15, we can go back and we can, we can, we can see uh, what past what he's what he's showing us here. He says the tape ex the tapes explain his work and the humility that was in this man and the humility that Yahweh wanted in his seed. Yahweh did not want pride. He did not want arrogance or any of these goofy things that go on with being proud. 
you know, proud is going to get us nothing. Pride is going to get us nothing but burned. That's all, that, all pride will do. Pride isn't going to get us into the kingdom. Pride will ensure that we get kicked out of the kingdom. We'll, let, we'll never make it. We'll never get there. And then he says, brethren, you really need these tapes. We really need that lesson. So remember, uh, chapters 13, 14, and 15. Now highlight this next part. Highlight this next part here. He says, that way, if you will listen to these and start following these scriptures, you can fight these things out of your mind and body and become and come to a repentance stage and a conversion stage. Okay? So highlight that. He says, that way, if you will listen to these and start following these scriptures, you can fight these things out of your mind and out of your body, and you can come to a repentance stage and to a conversion stage. You know, Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19 tells us to repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins can be blotted out, right? So we have to repent, and repentance can take place in an instant pastor showed us that it can take place instantaneously we know we realize we couldn't commit a sin we can repent of that sin but we repent and be converted that conversion process can take a while because it can take a while to get some of these old practices these old habits rooted out of us you know it can take a while to get rid of those things but through our patient persistence in doing righteousness they will be purged from within us and we can overcome those things we just have to take it one step at a time, sometimes one day at a time. But we have to be persistent, that patient persistence in doing righteousness, and that's how we progress through that conversion stage. Now, you can come to a stage of humility, Pastor says, we're back to the book here, where you can come back in contact with Yahweh, and until you do, you're cut off from him. You know, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says that Yahweh's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But it's your own iniquities, it's our own sins that separate us from Yahweh so that he won't listen. So we have to get rid of that. We have to purge this rebellion and this, this idea that we know more than Yahweh or that we know more than our teachers. We have to purge that out of our, out of our heads. Now, highlight this next part here. Notice here it says, Pride cuts you off from Yahweh. You are cut off when you get to this point and start raising hell about things you know nothing of. So I highlight that. Highlight that whole thing. Highlight that. Pride cuts you off from Yahweh. You are cut off when you get to this point and start raising hell about things you know nothing of. Take a look. If you take a look here in Yada. Yada chapter 1, there's only one chapter, but verses 10 and 11 there. It says, but these speak evil of those things which they do not understand. But what they know naturally, instinctively, like brute beasts, and those things, they corrupt themselves. If you think about what's being mentioned here, it says what they know naturally or instinctively. You know, what is everybody born with that we have to overcome? What is it? Praise Yahweh, it's that carnal mind. And it, that carnal mind is, is what? Praise Yahweh, it's, enmity, it's an enmity. It's bitterly opposed to the laws of Yahweh. And that's what we have to overcome. And this is that natural brute beast that they're talking about here. It says, he says that influence, you know, it's talking about that influence from the carnal mind that is bitterly opposed to the laws of Yahweh. And what do they do? Well, they're acting on emotions. They're working on emotions. And they follow after the lustful ways of the world instead of the righteous laws of Yahweh which are forever. This lust of the world and this pride of life is not going to continue. It fades away. And that's in, uh, what is it, First Jacobon chapter 2, I think. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You know, it fades away, but he who does the will of Yahweh will live forever. Okay? But like natural, like brute beasts, he shows here, he says, and those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and they have run greedily in the error of Balaam for reward, and they have perished, notice, 
in this rebellion, in the rebellion of Korah. So that's what they that that's what they do. And you know, men, when we come to the house of Yahweh, there have been many people that have come to the house of Yahweh with the intention of trying to set Yisrael Hawkins straight with coming in and trying to teach them their vast knowledge that they have of the scriptures. And we have to remember one thing. We came here to conform to Yahweh. We came here to learn and to pattern ourselves after Yahweh. The ancient religions, the, the, old, the old mystery religions, if you remember the priests, the, 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 what, the, what these ancient religions would do, they would actually change to meet the needs of the people. That's what they did. They changed to do that. Well, when we come to Yahweh's house, it's us that change. We have to come and we have to change into the image and likeness of Yahweh. That's why we come here. Okay? And if we go back to the book here, it shows it says you are even condemned in the Holy Scriptures at that point if they practice these things. He says, you can change. Pastor says, you can change if you repent, if you humble yourself, if you confess and turn back to Yahweh. Now, highlight the rest of this paragraph. Okay, highlight the rest of this. It says, he says, he will forgive you through the very priests who you are condemning right now. It has to be through those priests. There is no other way. This is how Yahweh set it up, and it will be forever throughout the universe. The priests of Yahweh will rule, they will teach, and they will magnify the laws of Yahweh throughout the universe forever. This is what is promised in your Bible. It would never work any other way. Okay, so highlight all highlight that. He says he will forgive you through the very priests who you are condemning right now. It has to be through those priests. There's no other way. This is how Yahweh set it up, and it's going to be forever. It's it's going to be forever throughout the universe. The priests of Yahweh will rule, they'll teach, and they'll magnify the laws of Yahweh through the universe forever, and that's what is promised in your Bible. It will never work any other way. Okay? And the idea of, here's some cross-references that you can put here for, uh, for this repentance. In Yekeske chapter 18, verses 27 to 28, is a real decent, I mean, it's an excellent example, one of many. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he will save himself and live. Because he has considered and he has turned away from all of his transgressions that he has committed, he will surely live, he will not die. In 1 Jochanan 1, 1.9 it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And then in Psalm 32.5 it says, We acknowledge our sins to you, our iniquities we have not hidden. We said we will confess our transgressions to Yahweh. You forgave the guilt of our sin. Our sins you blotted out. Salah. Okay? So there's not, there's not any other way. This is the only way. Verse 53, if we go back to the book here, it says, And it will be established at that time when the two witnesses are called out to their work at the established place at the habitation of the house of Yahweh, this is the same thing that was spoken of in Revelation that we studied out for, for a couple of days, and that was in Revelation 6-7. We covered this just yesterday, so I'm not going to harp on it. I just want to bring it back to your memory. This great war is going to take place over a fourth part of the earth, which is being controlled and under the plans that Malachi Martin showed. And, of course, that was shown in the book, what, The Keys of This Blood. It says, there are more people, and he goes on and he shows down here, Pastor shows he says there are more and more people finding out what is really behind this malachi martin told about this before it ever took place he revealed the nations that would be affected with mary's war the queen of heaven all of israel or the jews worshiped her at one time that is the queen of heaven and this is given to us it's actually in uremia chapter 44 uremia 44 17 through 19 where it, where it shows that the uh where that they, um, where that 
they worshiped the queen of heaven. They poured out drink offerings to her and, and baked cakes to her. You know, and as long as they were doing that, everything was fine. But when they stopped doing that, as the prophet said, that's when the woes and stuff came upon them. Well, why weren't they having the problems prior to that? It's because they were already following the queen of heaven. They, she, there was no need for her to go after them to try to get them to turn. They were, already do, she, they were already doing her will. They were already doing what she wanted. If we go back to the book here, it shows it was given to them to kill with the sword and with hunger and with pestilence, the same as under the authority of this beastly system. Highlight this next part here. It says, under the authority, did you get that? In other words, it is planned. And they have it within their hands, this power, the power to bring this about. Okay? Under the authority, did you get that? In other words, it is planned. And they have within their hands this power to bring this about. Okay, and then Pastor shows her, he says, President Bush is one of them. The quartet sets the, uh, sets the supreme right uh, the quartet set supreme right now to bring this about. And then in verse 57 it says, and uh, it's a continuation of this, of this other verse here, and it says, and they were bound for this great river Euphrates, and uh, Revelation 7, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, and I saw these things, and I saw these four angels, and these four angels standing, holding this great power in their hands. Okay? So, We've seen uh, this, this, uh, this one-third of man, and we know that this war is going to kill this one-third of man over that one-fourth part of the earth, right? And this is where they are bound. They are bound for this great river Euphrates, and I know we've seen this before, but if you take a look, you can see there how the earth is divided, and that one-fourth part of the earth is in that upper right-hand corner over here. Okay, that one fourth part of the earth is in that upper right hand corner and coincidentally, coincidentally, that's where all of the tensions and everything is taking place right now. You've got the, you've got China, you've got the things that are taking place, uh, you've got the things that are taking place right here, you know, in, in China, you've got, uh, you know, you've, you've got the Middle East, you've got everything that's taking place right in that area, which is also where the great river Euphrates is just as the prophecies showed that it would. Okay? And if we go back to the book here, and it shows these four angels, uh, it says these four angels are standing and holding this great power in their hands. And then I saw another messenger, another Moloch, ascending from the east, having this, you know, having this living seal, or having this seal having the seal of Yahweh, and remember what that seal is, having the laws, carrying the testimony and the laws. It says they have this great seal of Yahweh. Now keep these two things in mind here and look at chapter 10. In Revelation 10, 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh Moloch, when he will begin to sound, the great secret of Yahweh would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. And pastor shows here, he says, if you go back to Isaiah with all of this in mind now, Remember the four angels here, the quartet, and as the news is calling them, when this messenger is having this, uh, and when the messenger having this seal of Yahweh, combine this with the prophecy of Zechariah saying that I'm going to establish this in all of the earth. This is the finishing thing. This is going to be finished, and it's going to all nations at this time. Now highlight this next part here, in verse 60. It says, or it says Isaiah 8:16. It says, "Bind up the prophecy and seal the law." That is, this is the law that Yahweh is, ta uh, is talking about that the messenger is carrying from, this e from the east going west. Okay? So highlight that. It says, bind up the prophecy and seal the law. And this is the law that Yahweh is ta talking about that the messenger is carrying from the east and going west. And pastor shows, he says, if you go from Abilene, Israel to Abilene, Texas, you will go do west okay you will go do west and that is if you take a look over here you got Abilene Israel right there and if you go this way do west 
right there. Straight line. That straight line says you can't go to the north, Pastor says, uh, or you'll miss it. You have to go due west, and you'll run into Abilene, Texas, where the buffalo roam under the authority of Yahweh, where Abilene, Texas, Abilene, or the city of Yisrael. And if we go back to the book here, he shows it says, Bind up the prophecy and seal the law among my disciples. I will wait on Yahweh who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him, and behold, I and the children whom Yahweh has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from, uh, from Yahweh of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. And this word Zion, this is a vocabulary word. So remember, here's a, uh, here's a vocabulary word. This word Zion means uplifted place or mark of Yahweh. So this word Zion means uplifted place or mark of Yahweh. When they say to you, seek those who have familiar spirits. Yes, they do from time to time. Those who have familiar spirits, this is going to grow. And you're going to see more of this, as Yahshua said, as the days proceed. As the days get, as we get further and further into this great tribulation. He says, you're going to see more of this. Isaiah is speaking at this time, this deception, now that Yahshua spoke of, that is going to increase in the last days along with, Along with this, along with sin, okay. And if you want to take a look at Matthew 24, real quick, Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5, and there's then verse 24 it says, Yahshua answered and said to them, Be on guard so that no man deceives you, for many will come against my name or against my authority, and they say that I am anointed to preach salvation and will deceive the many, and they come in their own name. The 4,199 religions come in their own name. They do not get their authority from Yahweh to preach salvation. They don't have salvation to preach. In verse 24 there it shows, For there will be false messiahs and false prophets who will show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, that they would deceive, that they would deceive the very elect. Okay? And if we go back to the book here, if we go back, if we go back, if we go back here to the book here, it it shows here that these wizards who peep and mutter, should not a people seek their father? He says, in a place that he choos chooses to place himself, his name and his authority, and should you not go to the priest there and do what they say, as Yahweh said that you should do? How can anyone give life unless they have the power to give it? They don't have the authority to give it. Satan doesn't have life to give, neither do the 4,199 religions. They don't have it to give. It doesn't matter what they tell you. You know, we have to go back to what the, you know, we have to go back to what Isaiah 8.20 says. If they speak, if they, if, if it's not according to the law and the, and the prophets, if they speak not according to the law and the prophets, it's because there's no light in them. All of the prophets... And all of the apostles were inspired to write that uh, just to write that Yahweh alone has this power. He has this power. If you see the Pope resurrected, you can know for sure it was not a true resurrection. Remember, Pastor said it could very well come to pass that we could see these things. We could see these these miraculous things. We could see what is perceived to be miraculous healings. We could perceive to see. You know, it could be a perception that someone raised from the dead. But they don't have the power to do that. And it's being firmly grounded in the laws of Yahweh and the laws and the prophecies and the information and what is taught from the house of Yahweh that is going to keep us protected from this deception. It's a lying deception that is going to take place there if they see. If you see a pope resurrected, you can know for sure it was not a true resurrection. It's a lying deception. Should not a people seek their father? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and the prophecy, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Highlight this next, highlight the, the rest of this paragraph here. Brethren, you can rest assured that if anyone is running down the priests of Yahweh, it is because there is no light in them. 
he is going against the law and going against the prophecies. Okay? Make sure we highlight that. Verse 21, and they will pass through it hard, hard pressed and hungry and it will come to pass when they are hungry that they will be enraged and they will curse their king and their gods, their Elohim and they, and they will look upward for help. Then they will look to the earth and behold trouble and darkness. This is speaking of the nuclear darkness now that is over the whole earth that is going to take place. Okay, it's going to take place. The gloom of anguish and they will be thrust into thick darkness. Okay, so if you go back up there, it says where they will set, look at where it says that they, then they will look into the earth. Highlight that. Then they will look to the earth and behold trouble and darkness. This is speaking of the nuclear darkness now over the whole earth that is going to take place. Make sure we highlight that. I've got it highlighted and I missed it. So. Verse 67, the bottom of page 163. This is speaking of the last day's work, the same as Revelation 7, carrying the, name, uh, carrying the same seal as Revelation 7, the laws and the prophecies. Okay, ready? Top of page 164. Got your highlighters ready? Don't put them away. Get them back out. Okay, highlight this next part. If everyone would study and see these laws and exactly what Moshe set up, you will see this is the pattern of the kingdom that we are going to have and rule. They are the power. They are the power that if a person turns to them, they will give life and peace and joy. That is a sure thing if you will keep them. Okay, keep highlighting. We're not done yet. If you do not, what are you going to have? The same thing you are the same things you are promised. Misery, hatred, enragement, and cursing, this and cursing that. There is no peace in that way of life, brethren. What is causing that in your life? Did you ever think that it might be you? It might be your attitude, your rebellion, and your pride. Okay, so highlight all that. Highlight all that. Okay, and think about what pastors what pastors telling us telling us up here. If everyone would study and study these laws and, uh, and exactly and and see these laws and exactly what Moshe set up, you will see this is the pattern of the kingdom and that we're uh, that we are going to have and rule. They are the power. Now look, they are the power. These laws are the power that if a person turns to them, they will give life, peace, and joy. And this is a sure thing if you will keep them. If you want to cross-reference a couple of things here, you can cross-reference Romans chapter 10, verse 5. Psalm 119, 165. Okay, in Psalm 119, 165, remember it just says, Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing will offend them. So great peace, and it's a peace of mind that comes from following these things. And then you can also cross-reference Galatians 5, 22, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And then he shows, he says, and pastor says then, he says, if you don't, what are you going to have? Well, the same things you're promised. You know, I, you're promised misery, hatred, enragement, cursing this and cursing that. There's no peace. Absolutely no peace. Isaiah 57, 21 shows that there is no peace for the wicked. Okay? And what causes these things? What causes these things to come upon you? Yep. Jacob 4, chapter 4, verse 1. What causes this, these wars and fightings and, and these things among you isn't the, isn't isn't not the lust that that uh, that takes place that, that 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 occurs in your members. Okay, if we look here in Exodus nine nineteen five, it says, "Now therefore, if you will truly obey my voice, by keeping my covenant." Okay, so we have to if to want to in order to obey the voice of Yahweh, we have to you know by keeping that covenant, by keeping those laws. Uh, then you will be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay? So it's, you know, this is, this is nothing to take lightly for sure. It says, you will have rulership over the entire earth, everything that Yahweh has created. And that is what you are going to have if you will do this. 
Okay, Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 says, He who overcomes will inherit all things. Okay, and if we continue on back to the book here, it shows, These are the laws that you shall speak to the children of Israel, or to the children, period. You should be teaching those to your own children, and then most, uh, you know, we should be teaching them day and night. You know, we should, there's no reason we shouldn't have the, uh, you know, the sermons playing 24 hours a day as pastor has instructed us to do. We know that works. We know that gets into the subconscious mind. It gets in, and it absolutely helps for sure. If we go back to the book here, it says in verse 7, And Moshe, uh, uh, and Moshe came and summoned the elders to, of the people and set, them before all, uh, and set before them all of the words of the law of Yahweh. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do. So Moshe brought their answer back to Yahweh. Okay, and then down in verse 72, Pastor shows here, he says, uh, now in the next chapter, uh, we see the commandments. This is kind of a summary of the laws of Yahweh. He's talking about what the world refers to as the Ten Commandments. He says, this is kind of a summary of the laws of Yahweh. He gives you here in chapter 20. He says here, you shall have no gods before me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, right? He says, you shall have no gods before me. That is, you shall not turn to this God worship. I've shown you what this God worship is. And then he goes in and he, he, he says here, he says, God worship is having the stupid nakedness displayed that is, that is a come on to everyone who looks at it. That creates lust, which in turn creates hatred, which in turn creates war. Which in, forth, and which in turn brings forth what? It brings forth death. Okay? It is not in the Holy Scriptures. There's no way that you can find this stuff taught in the Holy Scriptures. In fact, everything in the Scripture is against this way of life that we see in Christianity and the Western world, as they call it. They are saying, let's make all the world this way. Let's not allow any of these holy laws that were given back to reign in any of this. You know that that don't let you know don't let it come in don't let it you know don't let these things be taught. Do you remember what the first imp uh, what the uh, first Roman Empire said under Constantine? Remember what was what Constantine said in there? He said we well, he said we want to have nothing in common with the hostile rabble of the Jews. He says, uh, uh, it, he says that's the way it's put in history. He says they still don't want anything in common with them. They don't even want them in the world in the world today, you know. Um, um, pastor shows here in verse seventy-five. Okay, let's highlight the. Let's get your highlighters out because we're gonna. It's gonna go for a little bit here. He says, "Now, now we see. Now here we see. Do not turn to these hinder gods. This is just a warning. What this conjures up in our minds, due to Christianity, is." that they whittled something out of a stick and they put it out here and they bowed down to it and they worshipped it and that is they prayed to it and they adored it oh you beautiful little idol you strengthen me and give me eternal life that is what they conjure up in your mind that is not what is displayed in the holy scriptures keep highlighting here it says following these gods is breaking the sabbath days following these gods is not honoring the sabbath you can stop highlighting there Okay, so you can see how Christianity, how they turn these things and how they twist these things around. You know, it's, it's all about hiding. It's, it's about hiding what they're doing. You know, they, they, you know, they, they don't want you to, you know, they, you know, it, it, it's, this is what they want. It's stuck in your mind. Well, pastor shows here, well, that, well, what is honoring the Sabbath? Yeshua honored the Sabbath, his disciples honored it, and so did the priests of old who Moshe set up under Aaron. From those priests he set up under Aaron and his sons, and his sons' sons came forth the holy people like Daniel, the prophet whom Yahweh worked, on, on a, uh, with, worked with on a personal basis. There were many others too, he shows here. And a pastor continues to show, he says, we're reading here about this work, and it is guiding us and telling us 
that there are 70 weeks here that Yahweh is going to use. He is going to have this house. He is going to have his house in that last week, preaching these things and bringing it forth to the world, converting about 2 billion people before this thing is over. The ones left alive, he said, are going to go up and start keeping the laws of Yahweh, and that is a promise to us. And if you take a look in Revelation, if you want to cross-reference Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 here, it says that after this, I looked and behold a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations, tribes, and peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and with palm branches, that is, taught to keep the feasts of Yahweh in their hands. Okay? And again, this is something that is going to be coming about very, very soon. You know, less than two years is what we've got is, is what we're looking at. This time period, men, is rapidly a approaching, um, and you know we just have to prove we have to prove to Yahweh that we're that we're going to uh, do whatever we can, whatever we need to do, whatever it is that we need to do. Then we're going to do exactly you know, put forth as much effort as we can in order to qualify for this job that He has called us to do. So I went just a hair over, men. Yahweh be with you. Yahweh bless you.